Hey, welcome from Freight Alley right here in Chattanooga. It is my pleasure to welcome Elizabeth from EPB. She leads the sustainability efforts here in Chattanooga. For those that don't know about Chattanooga, Chattanooga has the fastest internet in North America and has been driven by the efforts of the local utility company, EPB. So tell us a little bit about the reason that you guys went out and built a smart grid and, and frankly built the fastest internet. Wow, that's a great question. Thanks, Craig. Um, so EPB had the idea to build a fiber optic grid, um, I would say 15 years ago. Um, and really, it centered on reliability. So we knew that by creating a fiber optic smart grid, we would be able to give our customers a much more standardized service. We would be able to withstand storms, have fewer outages, and save the community collectively millions of dollars. And we've seen those benefits. Uh, in addition, we were able to design products, internet, telephone, and um, television service on top of that same infrastructure that has allowed a lot of flexibility and really given our customers options when it comes to those services in Chattanooga. So consumers have certainly benefit. Uh, companies like Freight Waves have been big beneficiaries. But more importantly, as you look at the future of what it means for smart grids and what it means to allow things like electric vehicles, uh, without a smart grid, uh, is it possible to have an electric vehicle infrastructure? That is such a good question. And I think um, the, the answer is that a smart grid infrastructure allows for an optimal um, deployment of electric vehicles. So when you have a smart grid, you have the ability to communicate um, two ways. And so that means that the utility understands the load that electric vehicles have at any given time and can adequately prepare. Uh, the grid is also much more reliable, which give consumers that confidence that the electric vehicle is gonna be powered um, and ready to go. Uh, and then um, those points all over the grid are just much better managed when your communications infrastructure is up to par to handle that information. So when you think about all, if we convert from a uh, internal combustion engine uh, infrastructure uh, society to an electric vehicle society, it's going to require a lot of power. Yes. And that power has to be smart. And so certainly in the city of Chattanooga, you guys have the infrastructure because you have fiber throughout that lets people get 10 gig to their house, uh, yeah. which is sort of ridiculous when you think about that. So I, it's ridiculous from a consumer, like what you need that for today, but not, but what it does for the businesses uh, and community is pretty powerful. But, but you guys had the vision to invest in that and look at it uh, from what it could mean for the future, for the next couple of decades. Yes, that's exactly right. I mean, the electric grid that we have today is completely prepared for all of the technologies of tomorrow. We'll be able to integrate distributed generation um, and be able to adequately manage all of those points on the grid because we'll understand uh, when the power can most be best utilized at different times of the day, taking into account things like peak usage. Um, and when it comes to electric vehicles, that same principle applies. You know, um, People are going to need to charge their vehicles really all times of day, but especially at night. Um, and our grid will be able to uh, self-heal when needed and make sure that all of those uh, different technologies are functioning as intended. So talk a little bit about, you know, one of the things that gets talked a lot about is climate change and, and certainly the risks with all the weather events that are taking place. And we think mm -hmm. about supply chain risk and uh, transportation risk, which we study a lot of and actually report a lot of. You're seeing a lot of weather events that are creating irregular patterns because of climate change. And talk a little bit about what companies can do broadly to mitigate their carbon footprint. How can they contribute to a lower carbon footprint? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think the first thing that any company would want to think about is really how they are impacting the environment. So that would be taking a look at all of your energy consumption, um, taking a look at all of your fleet or transportation needs. That includes how your employees get to and from work um, <clears throat> and all of your business travel. You can get a comprehensive picture of all of those activities and then get to work figuring out you know, what makes the most sense for your business. Some tools in the tool chest would be just efficiency, so thinking through how you can most efficiently use your power, if that's investing in your buildings or changing your processes. 
Um, you can also uh, look at electrifying your vehicles where it makes sense um, and promoting uh, the electrification of vehicles and alternative transportation for your employees. And um, another really popular way to mitigate that footprint is to look at renewable energy credits um, and offsets, carbon offsets, which are things that anyone can buy on the open market that do make a difference. And what do you tell a transportation company that's providing a, an important service of moving product, but still is reliant upon diesel and, and other forms of, uh, of transportation equipment that maybe are not electric or, or have the ability, frankly, because the technology is not there to be electric. What can they do as a company to, to really impact the, uh, the transportation costs as it relates to the environment? Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, one of the, the first things that they could look at, again, is, is carbon offsets, um, taking a look at you know what their fuel purchases are and then finding that equivalent carbon offset on the market. Um, that would be probably one of the first things that, that I would look at. Um, they could also look about you know how to get from point A to point B most efficiently, which I'm sure they're already doing for other reasons. There's but. a lot of startups <laughs> investing yeah. in consolidation. Exactly. And looking at smarter supply chains that uh, have a uh, less environmental impact. Mm -hmm. um, is there any particular technology that you're overly excited about right now? Wow. Well, there's uh, there is so much out there. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about the proliferation of electric vehicles. I would love to see um, more of those on the road to see longer battery life. And I think that's going to be a really transformative uh, technology for, for everyone for a variety of reasons. And do you think Chattanooga will play a role in that? I hope so. All right. Well, great. Well, thanks for coming in today. Tune in today at 4 p.m. for Freight Waves Now.